Hey everyone, welcome back to Vony Movies. Today I will show you the American epic science fiction film called Dune. The movie Dune is set in the year 10,191. Humans have unfolded many secrets of the universe and now travel from planet to planet. Different planets have turned into different nations and are governed by a single Padisha emperor named Shaddam Carino IV. The planets have houses, with their respective dukes who in turn follow the orders of the emperor Shaddam. One of such planets is the planet of Arrakis. It is a harsh desert planet that is the only source of a rare substance called, spice. Spice is a valuable substance that extends human vitality and is critical for interstellar travel. Hence, Arrakis, despite its harsh conditions, is considered the most valuable planet in the known universe. Because of this, the noble houses are eager to rule the planet. At the beginning of the movie, a native of the Arrakis named Chani narrates that they have been ruled by the noble house Harkonnen for a long time. The house Harkonnen is cruel to natives of Arrakis but the poor natives cannot fight house Harkonnen which is under the emperor Shaddam's control. Chani also says that one day, all of a sudden, house Harkonnen's troops leave Arrakis. But she is sure that the emperor is going to send someone else to take their place and exploit their resources. The scene then changes to another planet named Kaladin ruled by House Atreides. The Prince of Atreides, Paul wakes up from a recurring dream. He has breakfast with his mother Lady Jessica who is also a member of an organization called the Bene Gesserit. Bene Gesserit is an exclusive sisterhood organization whose members have advanced physical and mental abilities. Hence, Jessica also has the power to manipulate people's minds. She has been training Paul the organization's disciplines for a long time. Thus, Paul has powers to see the future and bears other unique powers that he is yet to discover. Paul's father Leto, who is also the Duke of House Atreides, has an important meeting with personnel from the Landsrod, the political body representing all the noble houses. In the evening, everyone in Atreides welcomes the VIPs who have brought a note from the Emperor Shaddam himself. The Emperor, who has recently removed House Harkonnen from the Arrakis, wants Atreides to take Harkonnen's place. He wants Leto and his troops to be in charge of mining the spice from Arrakis. Duke Leto is apprehensive of the situation but follows the Emperor's orders. Whilst in the meeting, Jessica notices a member of the Bene Gesserit organization, Gaius Helen Mahiam, staring at Paul. The meeting ends when Leto marks a seal with his ring confirming that they will follow the orders and go to Arrakis. In the following scene, we see Atreides's troops preparing to leave for Arrakis. Among the troop is their bravest soldier named Duncan who is also Paul's close friend. Paul has been getting visions about Duncan's death in Arrakis which he is worried about. Duncan assures him that he will be fine and leaves for the planet to prepare for Paul and the family's arrival. The following scene shows us Paul and his father Leto talking about various matters. Leto reveals that he has no interest in gaining wealth using the spice, instead, he plans on befriending the people of Arrakis called the Freeman. Unlike the former duke, Harkonnen, he plans to treat the Freeman with respect so they can be a valuable asset to Atreides. Later, Paul and his associate, Halleck practice a duel. They have a wrist device that creates a layer of protective force around their body. Halleck is worried that they will be attacked by the jealous Harkonnen so he asks Paul to be careful when they reach Arrakis. Elsewhere, in the house of Harkonnen the former ruler of Arrakis, Duke Baron and his rogue nephew Rabin talk about their last ship leaving the Arrakis, leaving the planet to the Atreides. Rabin belittles the emperor for taking them off Arrakis and handing it to the Atreides. But he is surprised when Baron reveals that the emperor is actually planning on the Atreides' downfall because he is jealous of their growing popularity. The Emperor's plan is to kill Leto and all his men when they are mining spice in Arrakis. Back in the Kaladin, Jessica wakes Paul up and takes him to a doctor to get his vitals checked. It turns out that the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mahiam has come to know of Paul's visions and wants to check if he is, the one, they have been waiting for. She makes him put his hands on a box and test his impulse control, which he passes with great effort. After Mahiam leaves, Jessica tells Paul that the female organization, Bene Gesserit, has been steering the politics for years from the shadows. And they have also been carefully crossing bloodlines in order to give birth to the one man who will have the potential to save Arrakis from spice exploitation. It turns out the test Paul just passed shows him to be the one they have been looking for, the messiah of Arrakis. 
The very next day, Leto, Paul, Jessica, and their troops leave for Arrakis and land on the planet. They are welcomed by the native freemen who have already been told that Paul is their messiah, although Paul himself believes that it is just a superstition. Later, he is in his chamber learning about a massive sandworm found in Arrakis. To be safe from it, the freemen walk in irregular motions in the sand. As Paul watches holograms, a deadly insect emerges from a wall and tries to kill him. But Paul saves himself at the right time. On investigating, it is found that a Harkonnen soldier has been hiding in the walls to kill Paul. The scene shifts to Baron meeting Mahiam. She knows about the Emperor and Baron's plan to attack Atreides but cannot do anything because it is the Emperor's order. However, she asks Baron not to kill Jessica and Paul. Baron agrees to do as she says, but plans to throw the two in the sand for the sandworms to kill. Back on Arrakis, a meeting is held where the officials discuss their plan to mine the spices. It is revealed that the Harkonnens have left them with damaged equipment, setting them up for failure. After a while, Paul reunites with Duncan who had been sent to prepare for their arrival. Duncan says that he has been living with the Freemen in deserts for four weeks. He tells them all about their ways to survive and also about a Freeman community called Siech and their leader Stilgar. Stilgar has also come to meet Leto. Leto offers him to work together with the Atreides but Stilgar belittles him from taking from their land without any returns to the people of their land. They separate on a good note after Leto promises to never harm the Sieches. The next day, Leto and his team go to inspect the spice sand that they will be mining from. They meet a freeman and an imperial ecologist named Dr. Liet Kynes. She checks the integrity of Leto's sand suit which is supposed to recycle sweat and urine from a person's body into drinking water. While checking Paul's suit, Kynes notices that he knows Freeman's ways of wearing the suit despite it being his first time. This makes her think of a prophecy that says their messiah will know their ways of life despite being from another land. Kynes also believes Paul to be the one. After that, all of them leave to inspect the spice sand. While sightseeing, they see two sandworms approaching the harvester that mines the spice. It seems to be a usual problem as a carrier is sent to lift the harvester to get it out of the worm's reach. However, the carrier's anchor breaks and it is unable to lift the machine. A crew of 21 are inside the harvester who are about to be attacked by the worms. Lado thinks quickly and orders everyone to get their aircraft closer to the device and get the crew on board. They land on the sand minutes before the worm attacks and manage to save the crew. However, Paul sniffs whiffs of spice in the process and gets a vision. When he returns home, he is still dizzy and the doctor concludes it as an allergy. However, Paul claims that he saw a Freeman girl in his vision and he knows it wasn't just an allergy. He also tells Jessica that she is pregnant but Jessica dismisses it. The scene then shifts to the Imperial Army planet where a battalion is being prepared to attack Atreides and kill Leto and his family. They are called the Army of Sadakar, who are said to be the deadliest army in the known world. Back in Arrakis, the doctor brings Paul a medicine to help him with the allergies. But little does Paul know, the doctor has made a deal with Baron and the medicine will make Paul unconscious. Leto and Jessica are also given medicines for their sleep. Jessica takes it but Leto doesn't. After a while the army of Sadakar attacks them. Leto wakes up and realizes what is happening. But before he can do anything, the doctor hits him with a dart that slowly makes him unconscious. Outside, the Sadakar army wreaks havoc in the place taking the Atreides' army by surprise. Since the Sadakar is double in number and has several weapons, they soon overpower the Atreides. At the same time, the doctor tells an injured Leto that Baron has abducted his wife so he had to do what he says. The doctor then takes off Leto's ring to give it to Paul. He also places a poisonous molar tooth in Leto's jaw saying that if he bites hard enough, the tooth with secret poisonous gas will kill everyone around. Meanwhile, the Sadakar army abducts Paul and Jessica to throw them in the sand. Paul wakes up in an aircraft with his mother gagged and tied beside him. She can use her power to manipulate people and make them do what they are told. So the two use their powers and manage to kill their abductors. Paul finds a fremkit placed by the doctor for their help. After that, they escape in the middle of the desert. In the meantime, an unconscious Leto is taken to Baron and stripped naked. The doctor asks Baron to free his wife but he is instead killed mercilessly. Baron then tells Leto that his bloodline will end today. Seeing no way to escape, 
Leto bites onto his teeth and lets out a poisonous gas that kills everyone in the room including himself. Somewhere else, Paul and Jessica set up a tent using the kit. They also find a note from the doctor and Leto's ring. Looking at the ring, the two realize that Leto is dead and cry mourning his death. The following morning, Duncan approaches the Freeman Imperial ecologist Kynes, and asks her to help look for Paul and Jessica. Back in Baron's palace, his soldier come into the room after the poisonous gas has faded. They are surprised to see that Baron has attached himself to the ceiling and is somehow safe. At the same time, Paul gets high on the spice in the sand and starts to get visions of the holy war that is about to happen in the future. He sees himself killing millions of people and the deaths make him hyperventilate. A worried Jessica calms her son down. Sometime later, he wears his father's ring, taking the title of Duke of Atreides. They are soon found by Duncan who kneels in front of Paul calling him the Lord Duke. Then all three of them are taken to a safe place by Kynes. The place they are staying at is an old ecological station that was supposed to provide flowing water to Arrakis. If the project had been successful, Arrakis would have been a paradise. However, before the project was completed, the spice was discovered in the sand. Everyone's attention was diverted towards harvesting the valuable spice and the project was dismissed. A while later, the Sadakar army reaches the safe zone and attacks everyone. Duncan puts his life at risk to save Jessica and Paul. Paul yells at him to stop because he has seen Duncan's death in his vision but Duncan stays put to fulfill his duty. Eventually, he is killed while fighting the army but Jessica, Paul, and Kynes manage to run away. Jessica and Paul get on an aircraft that only holds two people. Meanwhile, Kynes asks them to head south to meet the Freeman who will help them in their cause. She plans to board an aircraft from another station. The mother and son fly away but Kynes is soon caught by the Sadakar soldiers. They are about to kill her when she makes rhythmic thumping on the ground. The noise attracts a sandworm who kills all of them in one go. After that, Paul's aircraft is chased by two enemy aircraft. Paul enters their vehicle into an aggressive sandstorm making their enemies believe that they are dead. In the following scene, we see Baron bathing in medicines to heal the injuries caused by the poisonous gas. His nephew Rabin arrives there and tells him that Leto and his bloodline are dead. Finally happy that his enemy house is destroyed. Baron orders Rabin to continue to harvest the spice and kill all the freemen. Somewhere else, Paul and Jessica crash land in the desert but are safe. They change into the desert suit and start looking for the freemen to ask them for help. Paul had learned about freemen lives and knows the way they walk to avoid attracting the worms. They walk for the whole day throughout which Paul gets visions of freemen people and a specific girl telling him to not give up. The two stop to rest for a while when suddenly, they hear a loud noise. Paul realizes that a sandworm is nearby. To save their lives, they start to run only to be chased by the worm even faster. It emerges from the sand and is about to engulf the two but stops midway. Someone had set off a thumper to help them. Just then, the leader of the Freeman Stilgar, and his group surround them. It is soon revealed that they plan to kill Paul and Jessica for the fluids in their bodies. Stilgar stops his men saying that Paul is the messiah they were told about. The others do not believe him saying that Paul hasn't yet proven himself so he cannot be the messiah. One of them insults Jessica calling her old and a weakling. She proves herself by holding the man hostage with his life in her hands. After that, the leader asks everyone to make their way to the CH tab where Paul and Jessica's fate will be determined. Just then, the girl from Paul's visions arrives in front of him and introduces herself as Chani. As they prepare to leave, one Freeman named Jameis insists on having a duel with Paul. In Freeman's tradition, all duels must end with someone's death. Paul, who has been training all his life easily defeats Jameis but he hesitates to kill him because he hasn't killed anyone in his life. At last, Paul stabs the man to death and wins the fight. Then, the others pack the dead body and make their way to the CH tab. The movie ends when Paul sees a man riding a massive sandworm and Chani tells him it is only the beginning. The ending of the movie makes it clear that there is much more to come in the sequels. If you like this video, please press like to help the channel, and subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification. Thanks for watching.